Steve, stay with us as we talk more about the surging bond yields that we've seen today and in recent weeks. The 10-year Treasury reaching 4.9 percent for the first time since 07, almost five, putting pressure on stocks. Let's bring in Brian Jacobson, chief economist with Annex Wealth Management. Brian, welcome to you. Is this move in yields fundamentally justified? Well, you know, I think it is, especially if you consider that one of the big fundamental forces in the bond market, the Fed, is continuing to do quantitative tightening. And so, you know, they're not in there being that price insensitive buyer. Uh, foreign demand has also diminished, so households have sort of had to step in. So looking at it through that lens more as far as the fundamental forces based on just issuance and the flows, then I think that the move is somewhat justified. But I also think that it makes it that much more attractive if you can hold these bonds to maturity. And I think that's one of the big challenges. Oftentimes, investors, we have to get access to bonds through mutual mm -hmm. funds and ETFs, and you have to deal with the mark to market. Uh, so it's to the extent that you can maybe you know, hold some of these in individual fixed income portfolios, it can make the ride a little bit more tolerable. Right, exactly. Um, I guess the reason I ask is because we're all trying to figure out if this is a good rise in yields on stronger economic fundamentals or a bad rise in yields by kind of this unabated treasury supply that seems to be overwhelming markets. I do think that it is that supply coming from the Treasury as far as that surge in supply, which you know, now that that's maybe more visible and we also have perhaps a Congress that isn't going to uh, you know, continue to blow out the deficit, at least for the next year or so. Uh, so if you've got some gridlock, maybe some of those deficit uh, or those spending cuts as part of the debt ceiling lifting agreement can come into play. Maybe that could do something as far as a surprise to the downside in terms of some of the supply out there. So uh, on our investment committee here at Annex, uh, you know, thankfully, a lot of them were tempering my enthusiasm about adding to bonds when we got to 4.5%. Uh, I kind of wanted to go all in. And uh, thankfully, you know, their clearer minds and better thinking prevailed and uh, kept us at bay. Uh, but now that we're getting closer to 5%, it does look a lot more attractive for the longer term. Well, next time we'll invite those other guys on. I, I get that. <laughs> so, they don't have as nice of a tie as I do. No, That's the, no, or, yeah. nor the view that you do, clearly. Let me ask you this, though. I, the, you know, for most of the past couple of years or during this rate hiking cycle, uh, investors have been paid to stay very short duration. Are we getting to the point now? Maybe we're two months away. Maybe we're six months away from the point at which it will make sense to go out duration and lock in those longer term yields if you can um, hang on to maturity or even if you can't because you may uh, if rates start to fall uh, you would then be able to sell it at a capital gain. Yeah, that's really the key question here, and it's really what distinguishes this uh, increase in rates from the previous ones that we've seen, say, post-GFC, is just how high that short end has moved already, that there's not a huge incentive to lock in those longer-term rates yet. All you're getting is duration risk. But you do want to lock those in at some point. Yeah. Uh, now, my take is that the Fed is probably going to be slow to react to sl a slowing economy, and as a result, let's say that by the September of next Next year or maybe June, they will consider starting to cut. And then really it's around that time that maybe it makes more sense to start locking in those longer term rates. Now, of course, the market is going to try to move before that. But Chair Powell, I don't think he has, you know, we talk about hawks and doves. Sometimes it comes across more as like a dodo bird, I think, instead. I'm not sure there's like this clear, consistent messaging or this like worldview about how they should conduct monetary policy that'll keep investors guessing until probably the middle of next year.